I, Luke, send a message to all those that follow our Lord Jesus Christ. There is a terrible evil in the world. Darkness is spreading. <laughs> I know you are suffering persecution. Faith is being tested. I know you question the way, but I've come to Rome to find Paul. Now, why did you decide to focus on the Book of Acts for this film? I think, you know, when you look at Paul's uh, entire life, it's this massive monster of a story, you know, the A to Z. It'd take, you know, a 10-part miniseries probably to bring, you know, to life. So, you know, being able to focus on this specific moment at the very end um, and and really kind of get a glimpse of who Paul was at the end of his life was where we felt most comfortable, um, you know, in a two-hour film. So now tell us, how did you prepare for this role? Wow, so I did a lot preparing for the role. One was the accent. The accent was changed three times before I actually got to the location in Malta to shoot. Um, so we worked on Mid-Atlantic, RP, which is received pronunciation, standard British. So that was one of the things. And then there was a much deeper, more emotional thing where I, one, wanted to understand first AD, what women's rights were at that time, what they could say, what they couldn't say, how you could stand up for yourself, how you couldn't, when you had to had to be strong and, and really what your responsibilities day to day was so that throughout the film I could really live in, in the character. Great movie, great job playing the role of Paul. How has this role changed your perspective in any way? Mm. It's changed it quite considerably. You can't open your heart to playing Paul without it having an effect on your life. And uh, I, I hope I can hang on to what I learned for some while yet. You know, it would be a shame, wouldn't it, if next week I was cast as emperor of the world and, <laughs> and was beastly to people. It, that might affect me as well. But yes, it did affect me, and hugely so. And did you get a chance to finish reading the New Testament prior to playing this role? No, I didn't have time for it, but I knew the New Testament. Or the Book of Acts? I didn't have time for any of that. I read all of Paul's letters and I read one or two important parts. Of course I did. And I read, of course, uh, uh, the potted biography of Paul. And uh, the size of St. Paul's Cathedral in London gave me an idea that he might be rather an important role. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and what is your favorite scene with Jim Caviezel in this movie? With Jim, we have a lovely scene together where uh, we talk about our time on the road together. You know, we're like veterans, really, that have been through a campaign together and have that sort of regard for each other, you know, to always watch each other's back. That was, a, that was an important scene. And, and also, the last scene that we have together is very powerful, really powerful. And, uh, and when he's still instructing <laughs> Luke on how to live his life, <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't do it. He had yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I had dedicated my uh, career to our Lord when I saw the movie Ben Hur and wanted uh, people. I, I said I, I, I wanted to do films like that, and the. Um, and so when I read this, I thought, you know, this is more of what. I, I'm just supposed to do. I, I just look for uh, redeemable qualities in that. I think you walk away from a movie like this uh, aff affected so in in a lot of ways that you know I had to watch this or see the character um, from a point standpoint of someone who doesn't even know God that has got money that has got wealth is a medical doctor that doesn't need any of that. And, and has no rules, no Ten Commandments can be, anything is moral to him, and yet he's empty. And uh, I saw it in a lot of, reflecting a lot of what's in my industry and people that um, have a lot of things but have nothing. You know, the scene that I really uh, like in this film at the end when you pray with the people in prison and you tell them just a moment of pain, but, you know, it turned out that was, that got me right there. Can you talk about shooting that scene? Well, Luke has always, as, as we all are, um, struggle with sin. You know, we struggle with our humanness, wanting to survive and live longer, and, and this isn't fair. And trying to be obedient to the message of our Lord. 
And it is, in the, one, my wife pointed this out uh, r really clearly to me that the center piece of this film is about forgiveness. And we need that in this time period. And uh, so he, he is, he, he, in one scene he says, you know, peace begins with you. And then in the next scene he is saying, you know, that's not, it's not right. He, he plays the victim. But ultimately, when he is Christ, when he really uh, um, looks like Christ, is when he is obedient to that message. And um, I think that that, especially just to Christians, is that you know um, it, we are in the uh, we know that Jesus died for us and that he uh, suffered greatly for us, but that other Christians right now depend on us, and we need to voice out to the world. You know, like last year when I heard that Christians were being executed by crucifixion on Good Friday and not one message in the media to that. Now you put that out to them why that was not in, important. You know, and hopefully at least some Chaldeans or some Coptics or some Assyrians or two million of the children that are sold into sex uh, slavery every year or not every year, but two million of them are in, involved in that, that somebody gets that out there, you know, and, and to the... the, the uh, so, look, the truth is good medicine, but when you walk out of this film, you feel loved, and you feel hope, and it, no matter how evil uh, goes, it is nothing compared to what our Lord did for on the cross, he didn't conquer anything.